The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. It's time once again for the Retroactive Sports Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Lenz, and joining me always is Johnny the Jam Man Townsend. I got to think, I'm going to, for every podcast, I want to think of a different nickname to bring you in by. I love it. Uh, So far, you're. Uh, hitting it out of the park, as they say. If you do it every one of these, you're going to have a great, amazing record that will stand the uh, the tears of time, I think. On top of that, Andrew, I... Uh, so, Hulk Hogan... <laughs> I, are we going to get into the Hulk Hogan lies thing? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Hulk Hogan is uh, dating this lady and she is a known and keep in mind, he lives in the Tampa Bay slash Clearwater area. That's very important to this story. So Scientologist, she li- she's a known Scientologist. Her okay. family are big Scientologists. He was recently seen at, uh, is it the Jaguars that are down there? I think so. What Tampa? No, that's oh, it's the uh, Buccaneers, the Buccaneers. Bucks. Bucks. It's and... how much a pirate pays for corn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's probably what you're doing. <laughs> they got me. You got me on that. Uh, he was seen at the Buccaneers game because the big rumor was Scientology's trying to get Hulk Hogan. And he was seen at that game with a certain man whose missions are often impossible. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then apparently he had lunch with some known uh, Scientologists. Uh, so do you uh, do you think Scientology is getting him another uh, another uh, big time celebrity? I mean, this guy was Mr. Nanny, Andrew. From what I understand. OK, I have we I think we both do. I know you probably got way more knowledge, but we both have a weird fascination with Scientology. I most certainly do. I am beyond fascinated. I know way more than somebody who's not in Scientology should know about it. Yeah. But I feel in Hulk Hogan's way and the way that I feel that they stroke Tom Cruise's ego. Yeah. Hulk Hogan might might join Scientology. Well, Tom Cruise is essentially like second in Scientology. Yeah. Just behind David Miscavige, who's like the big guy there. And uh, it is it is fascinating, honestly. Uh, we won't get into Scientology because they'll probably start fair gaming us uh, if we yeah. do, which means they would follow us and stuff. I love uh, how they fair game <laughs> Trey Parker and Matt Stone, and they were like, no, we can't find anything on these guys. These guys are boring. Yeah. All they do is work. <laughs> yeah, they go to work. They even went through their trash and everything, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't find like, nothing. Couldn't nothing. Uh, one of the notes essentially said they don't even go out to eat. They actually have food brought to them all the time. <laughs> they don't even go to lunch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I that was that was Maybe. that that was my first. I'd heard of silent Scientology. We'll get on topic here soon, I promise. Yeah, but I'd heard of Scientology, but my first real interest was really picked. I was I'm already just fascinated uh, by cults, so I have a. No, I wouldn't say expertise, but I have knowledge when it comes to cults. Like I, I look into them, I study them, just to have a fascination with them. And uh, Scientology came on my radar. I'd heard of it, but obviously that South Park episode that was all about it really piqued my interest. And I just done a deep dive and it's fascinated me ever since. It's dying, basically. It's uh, they're losing members left and right. It's nowhere near the behemoth it was. But they own a lot of property around the world. 
Yeah. They have tax exempt status that really helps them out a lot. Uh, the way they got it is fascinating. By the way, they basically uh, threatened lawsuits to individual people in the IRS left and right, before, and they finally said, "Fine." <laughs> That's basically the gist of it. Uh, and they have a fascinating. Like I encourage anybody if you're remotely have any slight interest in this, look into it. It's just fascinating. Uh, but there's a lot of abuse and stuff that goes on there. It's it's a it's not a fun time to be a Scientologist, but it's a fascinating uh, thing to learn about. Uh, there's a lot of really good documentaries about it. I'll, that's a good way to look into it. Yeah. I just don't think it would be a bad idea if we were fair game, because then we. I could... think it would help our status. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> I would wear it as a bear badge of honor. I get a T-shirt made. That's they would literally game. be like, "This guy doesn't do anything. He just makes podcasts." <laughs> <laughs> but getting getting back on topic yeah well hulk here, hogan uh, uh we're we're praying for you brother <laughs> brother <laughs> but we are talking today about unbreakable record in sports yep. records a lot of people say are made to be broken and some of these are just Good and bad, because I I do know I have a bad one. <laughs> that oh, was, I thought it was kind of I thought it was kind of funny that will probably never be broken, and it's one of those things that I preach as a amateur I amateur sports historian. I guess yeah, I you know quite a bit. Like, I I would put you above amateur personally. Okay, I w- I'm gonna say amateur. I no, know that's because you're modest. I'm going to say that you know quite a bit. Like if I was going into a trivia contest, I would want Andrew on my team one hundred percent. He can answer all that stuff, and if anything about the Ninja Turtles comes up, I'm your man. <laughs> See, <laughs> coworker of mine was wearing Ninja Turtle socks the other day, and I was like, Johnny would love those. Show, sure, yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but unbreakable records. I think a lot of unbreakable records are not going to be broken because of the way. Everything has changed in the world of sport. Rules, yeah, yeah. rules change. Else. The games are always evolving one way or another. All the all the games do, and players and athletes also change. Yeah, like I think some of the most unbeatable ones is like all time records. Like you got Wayne Gretzky for points and assist and. Uh, what is it? Scoring like those will just stand forever. I think. What is it? No. If you take away, I think if you take away all of Wayne Gretzky's goals, he's still pretty much like number one or definitely in the top, like two or three in points. If yeah. you just take away all of his goals and just go by his assist, or if you take, I can't remember which one of goals are assist, but those are like crazy ones. Like I don't think anybody's ever gonna be like these are kind of like my honorable mentions. I don't think anybody's ever going to beat uh, Emmett Smith's rushing all-time rushing record. I don't think a lot of Jerry Rice records will ever be broken, and that's yeah. just because how the game is played and how long players even last. Yeah, last. yeah, especially in football. Uh, football yeah. uh, is a very obviously physically demanding sport. Uh, I would say, out of all the sports, it's probably the most physically demanding. And uh, baseball is a sport that prides itself on its records, Mm -hmm. right? Like stats are a major, I mean, stats are major in all the sports, but stats, especially in baseball, are such a big deal uh, that uh, I find those records really fascinating. And I'm very, and besides like contracts, obviously those things are getting astronomical for uh, baseball, well, for all the sports really, but uh you know it's just i just found some of those records are very fascinating obviously when we get into the basketball ones i can talk my mouth off about those uh you know I, will will chamberlain's 100 point game ever be reached i don't think so but i wouldn't put it out of the reach of possibility yeah, because nobody ever thought Oscar Robinson's averaging a triple double for a season, right? And then, uh, yeah, and then Russ uh, Westbrook did it yeah. twice. But uh, kind of just, I don't, I don't want to get in on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going to go, uh, but 
so I think we should do this. Uh, let's do this sport by sport. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, so which one do you want to do first? Uh, let's go. Let's let's go basketball just because I got that one. Okay. Already written. All right. Let's let's start with Wilt Chamberlain's very famous 100 point game. Famously, he and I can't remember who the other guy is who scored one point are the top two score. <laughs> Top two scoring duo ever in basketball because we'll put up a hundred and this guy put up one point. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> well, that's that's like Wayne Gretzky and his brother on the record for most points scored in a in an in a, in a NHL career by, by by two brothers. I think it's what's his brother. I think it's, is his brother named Chris or Brett. I can't remember, but yeah, they own that record. Wayne yeah. has obviously a lot more but <laughs> <laughs> i just found out a really funny thing um i there've been, the there've been like kobe famously had the 81 point game there's been a lot of 70 plus point games uh this season in the nba alone there have been multiple like more than ever uh 50 plus point games by different players the reason is back in wilt's day he was by far one of the most physically intimidating players. He was a humongous man compared to the others, besides maybe Bill Russell. That was like the that was why they were had such a rivalry, right? Yeah, is because they they actually held each other in check physically, uh, and actually were really good friends apparently, uh, which is really cool to learn. I heard that <laughs> but, was a lot of uh, Russell getting into Chamberlain's hut too. <laughs> that's always a part of it, right? Like I think any of those deep competitors like that. You know, you hear all kinds of stories about Michael Jordan doing similar stuff uh, with like Charles Barkley, whoever he's playing in the playoffs, something like that. But uh, so this hundred point game, uh, if you actually look into the game, Wilt Chamberlain, Chamberlain famously was not a good free throw shooter, but on this game, he actually shot super well. I think he hit like uh, close to 30 free throws in it. Just don't just off free throws alone. And that's incredible for only it's a 20, uh, eight or something like that uh and uh he was normally like a 50 percent like a shack type free throw shooter right shack famously unless he was eating a taco and his head would turn you remember those oh, commercials taco <laughs> neck syndrome you know what's yeah. really sad is when you, i did that too my neck just was like <laughs> yeah just like the tacos yeah <laughs> uh that's and so like it, a lot of things had to align right for him to hit the 100 the, the he played for the Warriors at the time. They kept giving him the ball. That also obviously helps. And he was hitting his free throws. All these things. This is before the three point line. I don't think he would ever been a three point shooter anyway. No. But this is well before the three point line too, as well. In today's game, not only do we have the three point line, but it's a major part of every NBA team's offense. Pretty much, if you can't shoot the three with any sort of consistency, it's very difficult for you to win. A game because uh, one team can catch on fire and you're you're done for i do think that there may be a time where somebody because in other uh basketball not nba but other basketball people have hit 100 points it's happened before in college and and uh different uh, i don't know if it's ever happened in the euro league i have no idea but uh, it's mm-hmm. just that uh, the game is so much faster now. Uh, all the rule, most of the rules, really help offenses out compared to defenses. You know, uh, you know, back in Jordan's day, as they say, like uh, that's the the Detroit Pistons made a living off of beating the freaking tar out of them. <laughs> they had the Jordan rules. Literally, there was like, hey, if Jordan comes down the lane, put him on the ground, <laughs> and you can't even really hand check today. In today's game, I it's hate it that so much, but that's just a part of it. It opens up everything, and it's constant movement. You have some players who are incredibly talented and can score and can get hot from three. Yeah. And I think all those things can combine to give you somebody who may sniff that 100. I don't think it will happen though, that's just so much. Uh, but. Uh, I I do think like Kobe's uh, famous eighty one against the Raptors. I do think that like somebody can reach that. I mean, people have come close uh, with some a lot of seventy point games. But it's really funny if you look at the top uh, single point games in NBA history. Most of that list is Wilt Chamberlain games. <laughs> well, like we just talked about with hockey, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Uh, recently, 
this season, one of the records that a lot of people thought would stand the test of time will be broken because LeBron James is going to surpass Kareem's uh, total points. It's going to happen. He's already hit the 38,000 mark, so he's he's on there. And regardless of how you feel about LeBron, I like LeBron, but I know a lot of people don't, and that's fine. But uh, he, one thing you can't say is that he doesn't take care of himself physically. Mm -hmm. Uh, The guy definitely makes sure that he's in good shape and puts a lot of uh, investment into his body. And that's what a lot, I mean, that's why um, Tom Brady can play for 50 years, right? Because he does the same thing. And And he's a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, they take care of, uh, I mean, he famously has a a diet, right? Like, it's ridiculous. Like, he's never eaten, like, a a, just one uh Cheerio or something like anything with any sort of flavor. I don't think Tom Brady's ever had in his life. Uh, but yeah. like I said, Cheerio, like that's the most flavorful thing I could think of. I was trying to think Fruit Loop, but the circle cereal was eluding me at the time. Uh, it's, I wonder if you gave him a Fruit Loop if his body would explode. Probably would. Like, <laughs> like his probably. eyes would dilate. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. it, it's just fascinating. The because as he approaches Kareem's number, just all the attention it's going to get, it's going to be a humongous deal. Nobody really said anything about him uh, surpassing 38,000, which is to me is still a big deal. Uh, he's going to catch that one. I think it just depends on where you stand when it comes to popularity. He's obviously a very popular character, but he's also. Uh, polarizing you either love lebron and you will live and die by him or you hate him it's one or the other it seems like uh, and i think i'm in a middle kind of thing like i'm not like ooh lebron yeah i get it i respect I lebron it. but yeah. i'm not like i don't hate him i just that's how it was with kobe uh you know like kobe you know kind of ripped my heart out because i'm a charlotte hornets fan and he could have been a charlotte hornet that was and i was hornets <laughs> Oh, I trust me. I know whose fault it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about that. I know who gets the real blame here. But you know, uh, it's like recently Steph Curry uh, surpassed Ray Allen and all the as like the great like hitting the most threes ever, mm-hmm. and people thought it was really good, right? Like it's a big deal because Steph Curry is just a more likable player. He does have his haters, but he's way more likable than LeBron James is just for whatever reason. And it's just fascinating because that was also another record that, uh, um, on the list I was reading. Like they brought up that record, Steph, uh, Steph's new record as one they didn't think could be broken. I I think it can be because you got these kids coming up and they're influenced by how Steph Curry literally changed the game, the way it's played for better or for worse. And there's a lot of kids who are like, I'm going to learn to shoot like Steph Curry. And I would not be shocked if a, if there's somebody who's going to come up who is going to be such a, an incredibly crazy good three-point shooter that in their career that they will surpass Steph Curry. I think it can most certainly happen. Yeah. I'm going to break out a little humble brag for my team here. How about eight consecutive NBA championships? Boston Celtics from 1959 yeah. to 1966. That will never be that that will never be done again. And I know it's one of those things where a lot of people say they're playing against plumbers and electricians and stuff. Yeah, like but that's that. garbage. <laughs> because Thank you. <laughs> that is garbage because everybody like that's during any era. Sure, they change and they evolve. Yes, but during that era, they're playing against their peers. Mm-hmm. They're not just. You know, everybody's kind of in the same boat per era because you come up the same ways. And that's just ridiculous to me to, to take. That's the people who really want to hate on Boston, which I get. Trust me, I understand. Because uh, I, I would do the same thing because they just dominated for so long. Any team that dominates for so long, and if you're not in that market or you're not a fan of that team, you're going to hate them. You know, d- wait till we talk about the Patriots. I've never liked the Patriots. <laughs> uh, See- I think they the thing with they the took Patriots, down Jake DeLome, Andrew, and I'll never forgive them for it. I think the problem with I, I don't mind the Patriots is because I grew up in an era where the Patriots were not that big of a thing. Yeah. Like a lot of care to they took good, down Jake DeLome. They were getting good and it wasn't anything like huge. Like they were just another team. And they got really lucky with Tom Brady that he became who he was. Yeah. Like nobody nobody expected that. There's a lot of luck involved. 
But yeah, I think, you know, it was a big deal when any team wins three in a row championships in the NBA. Like, that's a big deal. The Bulls did it twice, two different times. And I don't even think that will be that would happen. Most of the time, your quote unquote dynasties now in the NBA, they'll win multiple championships in a year span, but they'll be like, there'll be another team they'll sneak in and, and take one. And just to throw off the consent, you know, the consecutive years. But Warriors recently, right? The Warriors recently won like the won four or something like that. And but yeah. those are broken up because the Cavs won uh, one Raptors of those, made and, the, and the Raptors won one of those. So it, it's it most certainly happened. The Spurs were dominant for a long time in the NBA and won multiple championships because Tim Duncan, uh, for some reason, people forget that he exists, and he is one of the the. I dare say he's my favorite power forward ever. I just love watching big fundamental play. It's just a great nickname. It's one of those guys that you just like, if you want somebody to watch somebody do everything right. Yeah. You, you have them go to. And I never seen anybody use the bank shot more efficiently than he did. It was, it, it was a thing of beauty. I heard he's a petty trash talker too. I've it, where he <laughs> just says like, good. How did you miss that? <laughs> it's just like one word. Kevin Garnett was talking about it. It was so funny because you could just see him going, good, we scored, done, over with. <laughs> <laughs> just little one word. Thing. Yeah, that seems like that sounds like Tim Duncan to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I think you're right, though. The, I think winning more than four in a row is maybe impossible now. Yeah. Because it's just too wide open. Like this year, for example, there's like, like three or four teams per conference that could make the finals. It's so it's just so wide open nowadays. Yeah, that was in the, when they say they're playing against plumbers and electricians. I think a lot of people don't take into the fact that these guys weren't getting paid what they are getting paid now. Yes, there's that's a, a major. A lot of them had to have uh, other jobs, right? And that was in all yeah. sports, really, at this time, mm-hmm. where. Uh, that just kind of paid you some, but you, that wasn't going to pay you what you needed to live off of, and you had to go find another job. Uh, you know, it's very famous stories of famous sports people having, like, being car salesmen when they weren't playing, uh, you know, their sport. Like, that that was a common occurrence. There's a famous NFL player, definitely top 100 of all time, uh, Chuck Benaric, and his nickname was Concrete Charlie. And he didn't get it because of how he played on the field. Yeah, see, okay, here I'll he say this. It. So don't tell me yet. Like when okay. you tell me that his nickname is Concrete Charlie, yeah. my first thought is he must like when he hits you, it feels like concrete or something like that. That's what you would think, right? Yeah. He's a football player, is my first thought. So why no. did he actually get it? <laughs> uh he sold concrete part time. <laughs> <laughs> so he would get off of like practice or whatever, and then he would go to his job. And that was his job during the off season and part time during the season, selling concrete. But that's a great nickname though for football, <laughs> is it not? That's a great football but nickname. Was, but he was mostly known because that's what he did. <laughs> Do you think Scott Skiles is thirty assist in a game? Uh, I was wondering. I that was one I was really. I don't. I don't know. I think unless somebody's specifically going to go for it. The pass first player is a rare thing now in today's game. They do. There are those that do. I think um, uh, more. One of my absolute favorite players, the Joker, Jokic, is a team first guy. And but I don't think he'll ever get thirty in the game. And he's a center on top of that. Yeah. Uh, but he's one of my favorite players to watch. Some of the best passing you ever see is from that guy. My favorite thing in basketball is passing. I just think if somebody's good at it, it's a work of art. Uh, I mean, watch highlights of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, just their passing, and you're welcome because those are things are works of art. And there are players today who are very good and do pass a lot. I think I'm just I'm a Charlotte Homer, so just know that going in. I think Lamelo Ball is a will pass like he he likes to pass, but I don't think he's ever going to get 30 in a game. I think there's a chance he can get like 15 to 20 in a game, but 30 is another thing altogether because uh, not only are do you have to have a good pass and know where your teammates are and to get them where they lock the ball and all this stuff, but they also have to make the shot. <laughs> yeah. The closest was 25 by Rondo in 2017. Yeah. <laughs> so 
I actually, because I wanted to see who was the closest in the NBA single game assist leader. And in the top 10, John Stockton appears three times. <laughs> well, that makes sense. He he led the league like in assists per game for like, what, like four or five years straight or something like that. Yeah, he was. I think I think he's one of the only players to lead the league in assists and steals multiple seasons in a row. That's another record I don't think will ever come close to being broken. Magic's most is 24 in 1984. I was just looking at elite passers and see what they could. Yeah. Oh, here it is. I knew I had it on here somewhere. John Stockton, uh, the all he's actually the all-time leader in assists and steals. He has uh, 15,806 career assists. And that's nearly, and this article was in 2020, I think it is. Uh, and that's, at the time, that's nearly 4,000 more than second place. And he has... 3,265 steals, and that's 600 more than second place. Jeez. <laughs> and he's a guy who gets overlooked because, uh, I think I told you this story, Andrew, but one of my favorite things on that really good Dream Team documentary mm-hmm. is John Stockton was on that team, and he was the only one out of all those guys who could just walk around Spain and nobody noticed him. Because <laughs> he's just an average. He, he just looks, looks like, like an average, average dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the next closest to him that is still active is Chris Paul, and this is for assists, and he's only has eleven, only has, only has eleven thousand. Yeah, and he's not going to get it. Uh, he's he's on the downside of his career, and I like Chris Paul, but yeah, I can't. I don't. Most see- most of his assists today are uh, with the insurance, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anybody like LeBron is after Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, Rondo. Yeah. I don't see them lasting that long. To Rondo use. already doesn't play near enough to even be considered. And the other ones, they're just not going to get that. And on top of that, you have to get the most steals too. On top of that, career steals, career steals. We got Chris Paul is the closest, but he he's almost to twenty five hundred. Yeah. He's not even. Jeez, I it's think like, that's the big thing with looking at John Stockton. There was he averaged two point seventeen steals a game. Yes, and that's on top of all almost always adding ten plus assists a game, Jeez. and on top of scoring like between fifteen and twenty points a game. I'm trying to see if there's a young player. Nope. <laughs> I was gonna say Igudala is on here for assists, but he's borderline done Thaddeus Young's borderline done yeah there's nobody nobody's touching those yeah I I want to say that's one of those records that people don't even really realize that's I, I don't think anybody's coming close to it anytime soon that's for sure that's that's Wayne Gretzky-ish right there yeah <laughs> that's very Wayne Gretzky-ish to be just that high wow here's one I don't know if you had this did you have the consecutive game list uh, I had it at one point. I was trying to find it. I can't figure out what I did with it. I had it pulled up, but go ahead and go ahead and say it. Uh, it's AC Green. Yes, yeah, I knew that. Uh, Famous Virgin, I believe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thirty for thirty short on them. Uh, uh yeah. Let the jokes roll. <laughs> uh, he played in 1,192 consecutive games. Yeah. That will never be broken. Not, no. in, not in load management era. That, yeah, oh. in today's game especially, that's not happening. Because you just don't play your players every game anymore. Even if they can, you just don't do it. So he missed, looks like he missed some games, his rookie, his second year. So from his third year all the way, which was 87, 88, he played in every single game all the way until 98, 99. Yeah. Where he only played 50. But that streak of 82 games. I mean, he didn't start every game, but still being able to play in every single game. And he was a key contributor. To oh, yeah. The yeah. Lakers very, team. very solid player on a very, very solid player. Yeah, so I know a lot of people would be like, well, he didn't start. Well, even coming off the bench, I mean, the guy was averaging 30 minutes, over 30 minutes a game. And, and which in today's game, that's starter minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I'm not even kidding. There's starters in today's game who average under 30. So 
<laughs> they don't they don't play like I remember watching Kobe and Shaq like go like fifty five minutes in like a game. Yeah. Yeah. And now if you do that, uh if a coach puts a player in and they stay and they play the whole game, uh they get criticized for it now. Yeah. So it's just it just isn't gonna happen. Uh that uh hundred percent in today's game. If a player, they're going to make their, especially your, if you're a good player on the team, they're going to make sure you're not playing every game. It just isn't going to happen. So I'm with you on that. That's not anymore. Or or you want to go on? I think we got basketball covered there. I'm sure there's other ones, but I think the John Stockton one was the most interesting one to me because I don't think a lot of people talk about that. Uh, let's do. Let's go baseball. All right, because I got a, I got one right here that I can guarantee you will never, ever, ever be broken. Cy Young's complete games pitched of 749. Yeah, what's the next closest? Do you I'm even know? Just, I'm just curious about that. Oh, my goodness. Because this is, like we said, different eras. Cy Young's early, uh, what is it, late 1800s, early 1900s, and he's in the dead ball era as well. Yeah. So he is... Uh, the next closest, okay. Next closest that's probably actually a, a live that I could actually look at. Like, there's there is his actual next closest is Pud Glavin, Gavin mm-hmm. with 646. But Pud is just a great first name, by the way. He also uh played from 1875 to 1892. So, oh, geez. basically in the infancy of baseball. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of these guys. Oh, my goodness. The, probably the most modern era guy. Wow. That probably. I would probably have to give it to Bob Feller, but he's still 50s. You know, the, he debuted in 36, ended in 1956. Yeah. And he's got 279. <clears throat> Yeah, which is still a lot, but yeah, it's not. <laughs> and the probably, yeah, like Fergie Jenkins is on here. He played in like the 60s and the 70s. I think he maybe got into the 80s, Fergie. Yeah, he played from 65 to 83, and Fergie only has 267. Yeah. And the biggest contributor to this, why it'll probably never be broken, is because of pitch counts. Pitch counts. Yeah. And what's your pain? I think. Bryce got into a lot of people's heads when it came to sports. So you're paying a guy this amount of money. You're not going to try and kill off his arm. So you might, it's, see an, a guy, it's, it's a literal investment. Yeah. Yeah. You might see a guy, I think pitch counts are any, once you get over a hundred pitches, they're like, yeah, you might yeah. want to get out of there. Yeah. And then you, the reliever kind of killed it. Relievers, closers, everything else of yeah. that nature just kind of killed killed this off but uh, i mean th- th- i think it's also that's uh you know nolan ryan's strikeouts that's another reason why that, that one's gonna stand same thing that's gonna i think who randy johnson came closest to that yeah it says randy johnson was second and uh he's like he was still 900 away from even catching ryan's and then uh justin verlander was after that so Ver, yeah, we're, but Verlander's not close to it. No, no, he's still he's still pitching. Yeah, but uh, Randy Johnson had like twenty six hundred more than he had it in twenty twenty. So <laughs> yeah, Verlander and, and Matt Serger there. Yeah, they're they're down end the kind of career. Adam Wainwright's down end. Yeah, there's really nobody on this list that I would say. Nobody's going to do that. The other thing that Nolan Ryan holds too that I don't think anybody will ever break is seven no hitters in a career. Yeah, yeah. Nolan Ryan was a very. I mean, the, <laughs> no, pitcher. a no hitter is so rare that I don't care what sport you're in. It'll, especially today with uh, Twitter and everything, you'll know they're happening. <laughs> yeah. Like you know that you know when a player has a chance for one now, nowadays. My favorite, and I don't know why, because my brother and I used to actually keep records. We used to play seasons, and that's how old we are. He actually went to the library to write down records in his notebook because we didn't have internet and access to any of this stuff. Mine is 
Hack Wilson's 191 RBIs in a season. Man. And it, that is crazy considering I think back then they played less games than any than anybody else. Yeah, but good old good old Hack Wilson, 191. That's that's a lot. I think who is it? Juan Gonzalez got close to it. And then that was it. Uh, next close ever in a season, Lou Gehrig with 185. Uh, let's see. Modern day closeness to it where somebody would be Manny Ramirez with 165. But other than that, that's over an RBI a game. Way over an RBI a game. Yeah. Uh, when did he have this <laughs> amazing season? So he had this in 1930. And he played in 155 games. That's crazy. 155 games in itself is an achievement. You know, that's that's yeah. that's wild. Yeah, because what what's the baseball season now? 162 or 182 or something like that? It's a ridiculous number of games. Yeah. <laughs> well, the season before that, he you you in 1929 he had 159 RBIs. So how do you improve on 159 RBIs? Yeah. You get 191. Yeah. I yeah. always love that. <laughs> I don't know All why, because right. it seems so, just so untouchable. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those that it just doesn't seem like. What's the most no hitters in a row? Two. See, that's what I'm saying. That's how hard that is. <laughs> yeah, two. And I think there's only... Uh, been a handful of actual perfect games like that's oh, no hitters just, uh, are cool but if you're like yeah i got a perfect game you're i should have known this it's johnny vendermeer had two consecutive no hitters it's that name johnny yeah i should have known mm-hmm. that he did it it's in 1938 he did it against the boston bees and, and then the brooklyn dodgers four days later 1938 yeah i, I love all-timey bait now, here's another consecutive game streak that I don't think will ever be broken is that's Cal Ripken Jr.'s Iron Man of like over yeah. 2,000 games. That is ridiculous, yeah. And then the, the big one, I don't know. Like, I'm waiting for this one to kind of go down, but I don't know. Is Joe DiMaggio, and it sounds kind of crazy, like Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hit streak. Yeah. Because... I think there was a quote by Mickey Mandel where if you compile all of his hits to his uh, actual at bats, he he went seven years without hitting a ball. If you compare them to each other, so so fifty six games, and I feel some people might call me crazy. Out of all the sports, I think it's harder to hit a baseball than to make a point in an NBA game run for a yard in an NFL game, and then after baseball, score a goal in hockey. I I think hitting a baseball is the hardest. And I would would add hitting a baseball and actually making it to a base. That is is by far the hardest, I would, in my opinion. Dion even said they can make baseballs do weird things. Yeah. (laughs) That's. There's just a lot of because baseball has been around for so long. There's just yeah. so many, so it's many records. pastime. Ricky Henderson's. Have you seen that? Uh, oh, go ahead. Base. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go Ricky, ahead. Go ahead. Ricky Henderson's stolen base record of one thousand four hundred and six. All I was going to say there's, <laughs> there's this really great. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, Conan Conan O'Brien did an old timey baseball where he oh, went. Yeah. There's these people who reenact old timey baseball, and he went to one of those games. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> Highly recommend. <laughs> I could. I think I've seen that one. It's really good. <laughs> I like. There's one guy. What is he? He's called like Greg the Great or something. And he did, yes, like, yeah. And, and he did like if you were like if you were at an old time baseball game. And I just love the one where he's like, he's got a mouse in his trousers. He's got a mouse in his trousers. <laughs> I was also going to point out too, and this is just because I'm thinking of it now. Uh, there's a really good documentary on uh, YouTube. And um, after the phenomenon that was the last dance, the story of the Chicago Bulls and their, and their three-peat, uh, 
one of the guys who was a major part of that team that was barely talked about was Luke Longley. And so they did this whole documentary about Luke Longley, and it's fascinating. Highly recommend it. The, the Aussie himself. Everybody loves Luke Longley. Yeah. Yes. He seems such, such, such a likable dude. So I don't think anybody's ever, because they never thought, too, the other big one, and Pete Rose needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Is, I agree. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> uh, well, once they let, I feel once they let somebody in that did steroids. Yeah, that's what it, I'm saying. Yeah, l- yeah. let Pete Rose in. You, uh, the guy's name is Charlie Hustle. He's not gonna throw a game. Yeah, he's yeah. not gonna throw a game. But his hitting, his his hit record, like when he beat Cy Young, they thought Cy Young's hit record would never be, would never be broken. But I think Pete Rose is you know, all time hit hits in a career. And uh especially uh, I think in all sports taking the most tombstone pile drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really miss those days where Pete Rose would run in and Kane would just destroy him. <laughs> I don't I'm know big... why. I don't know why I loved it so much, but I did. <laughs> I met Pete Rose. He's a cool he's a cool guy. Wasn't he one of those who had a like in early in his career he did have a like a, a main job? I can't remember who it was somebody uh, like that. He was probably, it Pete Rose? He probably did. I know he's like one of the rare people that have made an all star game in like four different positions. Yeah. He was just one of those guys where it was just like you go, we Pete, we need you to play here. And he's like, yeah. What I can barely make love in one. <laughs> <laughs> the the last uh, yeah, the last player that got close to Pete Rose's 4,256 game or game hits, 4,256 4, hits, other than like Hank Aaron and some other guys, was Derek Jeter, who, who this sounds so bad compared to this, who had 3,465. Yeah, but think of all of those gift baskets he gave to those women. That really adds up. <laughs> <laughs> so hard to just even get three thousand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, me and Andrew love stats, so this is why this is like this. Actually, I, I I hate stats. I I like them to an ex. All right, I like I think they're fascinating. An, I like them to. I I do like that, but I do think sometimes stats in today's game. I think. Oh we, yeah, you're talking about analytics and all that analytics, stuff. Analytics, yeah. they overdo a lot of things that I think. Uh, the other problem with stats is nobody take kind of like economics. Nobody takes an account for inflation, like we say, like change the yeah. game. Like yeah. A, you can look at a guy like Joe Namath and Terry Bradshaw and Johnny Unitas, and you're like, how come they're throwing more interceptions than touchdown? Well, well you're looking at a guy here who. I was an avid basketball card collector, and I had notebook, a uh, plural notebooks, full of stats. I would copy off the back of those basketball cards because I just wanted to compare guys' stats to each other, and I would hand write these down. This is before spreadsheets. I was making my own spreadsheets by hand. <laughs> what my brother did with the notebook is we had everything in there. So if we broke a record during that season, you erase it out and then you put in the new guy's name. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I think that's the biggest problem is we it, it, there's no inflation and no looking at how the game is played from the other from last time. Like football's a great example. Football's so much more pass happy than it was back. Oh yeah. Well let's let's get in into football. Day. Yeah. Let's get into football. You are, yeah, you're right. That game's of all the games that have evolved, I would think basketball and football are by far the biggest ones that have evolved from what they were. I do have a college football stat that I guarantee will never be broken. Oh, what's that? Uh, most lopsided, or it's pretty much most points scored and most lopsided victory. In 1916, just in 1916 <laughs> oh. Georgia Tech beat Cumberland 222 to nothing. That's a video game score. <laughs> It happened. <laughs> so TCU don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been somehow. It could have been way worse. <laughs> TCU got destroyed. <laughs> Poor TCU. Yeah. Oh man. 
So that's my luck. My, when uh, the Charlotte Hornets actually make the playoffs, just making the playoffs, they get run off the court every time. So <laughs> I know what it's like. You're like, just give me one victory. One yeah, victory. I just won't just give me one playoff win. I need something, but they can't do it. <laughs> so, so speaking of playoffs, it's very hard to get into the playoffs every year, even to make a championship. Yes. So if you're this man known Otto Graham, also known mm-hmm. as Automatic Auto, you played in the championship game every single year in your 10-year career. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There's some players who never even get to a championship game ever. And he played in every single year he played. He was man. His his team, the Cleveland Browns, was in a championship game. Wow. That's impressive, honestly. That's incredibly impressive. Yeah. That's uh I don't think that'll Cause it, cause obviously you have to be good enough to make a team in the first place, but there's a lot of luck involved there too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ten years he played, forty six to fifty five, every year. Yeah, that's insane. That, <laughs> and like another bad one, and I'm gonna kind of rag a little, is the four consecutive Super Bowls by the Buffalo Bills. Yes, I do. I've seen I've seen that thirty for thirty. I know what you're talking I about. I don't know. If anybody will ever make four Super Bowls, I know the Patriots came close as Matt and I prayed. So Bills fans would shut up about making four straight Super Bowls. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) If you know me, I have no love for the Bills. Uh, So, but I think that's one that Bills fans can hold near and dear to their heart, though, because I don't see anybody even really making four consecutive Super Bowls, even just making a Super Bowl, yeah, is is not easy. I making them in multiple in a row is is wow. I mean, in any of these sports, if you're making these championship games, uh, it's a there's a lot of hard work and honestly a lot of luck. All of this kind of has to roll in together. Or what was uh I had a, it was an unbreakable stat when, for retro pop when we did when you guys had me on to do Thanksgiving football. Yeah. Ernie Nevers scoring every single point, scored 49 points in a game. I don't think yeah. you'll ever see Ernie him. always. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever see him do that again or anybody do that. Well, you definitely won't see Ernie Nevers do that again. But that. <laughs> yeah, I went there. I, I, I went there, Johnny. Rest in peace. Yeah. He's passed away, right? I feel bad if he didn't. I already said that. I'm assuming from what you said. I'm almost positive that. <laughs> We're have one heck no of a disrespect trip. to Ernie Nevers and his family. We're going to have one heck of a... Uh, uh, guy made the NFL Top 100 and we're... I'm yeah. not knocking him. He, I'm just curious. He passed away in 1976 at the age oh, of okay, 73. Yeah. So he... Oh, wow, yeah. He played for the Duluth Eskimos and the Chicago Cardinals. The Duluth Eskimos. Yeah, definitely can't. You can't call them anymore because the CFL team, the Edmonton Eskimos, are now the Edmonton Elks. Wow. Good old Ernie Nevers. Impressive. Impressive. 13 consecutive shutouts. That will never happen again, but that was in the infancy of the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Two safeties in a game. That's going to be hard. Actually, this one was just broken. Uh, thirty-two point comeback in the post. Oh, in the not in the postseason, but regular season. The biggest, the Vikings. I, you know what? I'm not going to mention it because I respect Matt too much on who the Vikings <laughs> came back on. I, I respect Matt way too much. Yeah, yeah. Just know it's been broken since. Yeah, just, just <laughs> we're, we're going to leave it at that. I'm sorry, yeah. Matt. I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> Oh man. But that is there's there's those are probably the one of the most interesting ones. Yeah. That and I love the autogram just to be that good. Like that's yeah. Tom Brady. And that's such an old timey name. Just the name. Auto is old. Yeah, Otto Graham. That's just an old school name on top of all that. You know who his what his running back's name was? Oh, please you tell me. Like this one. Marion Motley. <laughs> that's that is so incredible. <laughs> Barry and Motley. I like the, the old nicknames, like Red Grange. His nickname was the Galloping Ghost. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great nickname. Another one is I don't think anybody's ever going to touch Paul Krause's. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, interception leader. You think of a lot of different names. Uh, Paul Krause of the Minnesota Vikings owns the most interceptions in a career at 81. Even with the pass happy league it is now, it makes it so much more kind of like the NBA. It's so much more lopsided towards the offense. Yeah. And to the defense, when Paul Krause played, you could pretty much just punch a guy at the in the face. Not saying that they did, but you could just manhandle a guy all the way down the field and be able to pick and pick off the ball. So I don't think you'll, we'll see anybody ever have 81 interceptions in a career. Wasn't it um, Brett Favre? I think it was had a lot of known for a lot of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he owns the career record with. 366 or 300 i'm sorry 336 i think he also owns the record for most fumbles too wow all right um at interest of uh speeding this episode up a little bit there's some other sports here that i wanted to touch on uh in tennis uh nadal has has 14 french open uh uh, titles and the next closest person has six (laughs) So that's pretty dang good. Yeah. Of course, uh, and when it comes to horse racing, the name you always hear is uh, Secretariat. And I don't think that one will ever come close. I mean, when uh, a horse what well, wins like two in a row, what's it called when you win like the three major ones? It's called something. I can't remember. Crown. What yes. Yeah. Like that's, a ma- that's your major deal. Uh, golf has some pretty good ones. Um, uh, I mean, uh, but the one I really wanted to bring up that we haven't talked about is the king, not LeBron James, uh, number 43. I'm glad you brought this up. Richard Petty, Richard Petty and NASCAR. I, uh, a young whippersnapper named Johnny Townsend when he was a kid, one of his favorite comic books was one about the career of Richard Petty. And I read that thing so much that it fell apart. Uh, Richard Petty, uh, not only 200 career NASCAR, uh, NASCAR cup series wins, not only that, uh, but he has uh, in 1967 he won 20 he had 27 wins including 10 in a row. That's why he's that's the king. dominance. That's why he's the king. Uh, and in and in the modern era now, I I I don't even see that like ten, especially 10 wins in a row. That's just so ridiculously hard to do. I think five is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, five is an incredible amount nowadays. Uh, you want to get it? I could do read off some of the hockey ones that I thought were yes. pretty interesting. Yeah. Because yeah, when do. it comes to hockey, it's like Wayne Gretzky owns everything, and then there's probably like Mario Lemieux or Gordy Howe. Yeah, and then Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr owns the record for most uh, plus minus. Plus minus is if you're on the ice during an even strength or a shorthand goal, and the other team scores, you get a minus. If your team scores, you get a plus. Basketball has a very similar thing. It's a plus minus there too, but it's just how basically it tells you how well your team's doing when you're on the when you're playing. This, what it this, is. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of like this. So Bobby Orr uh owns the record for most in a season with he was plus 124. And the worst plus minus in a season belongs to Bill Mickelson of the Washington Capitals, who was negative 82. So minus 82, and he only played in 59 games. That made me laugh. That was one where I was like, I <laughs> that, would mean- been, that would have been my career if I was ever lucky enough to make any sort of uh, major athletic thing. I'd be known for something not good. <laughs> <laughs> and most penalty minutes, uh, the I found way different numbers. I just went with the highest one that I find is Dave Tiger Williams career penalty minutes of 3,971. So that man spent some time in a penalty box. And I found varying like different minutes. It's like sometimes off. And my favorite one, and we actually did kind of an episode on this as well, is the New York Islander Islanders with 19 consecutive playoff series won. That yeah. is that's incredible. Huge. That's that's humongous. Yeah. That'll stand across all sports. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Uh, and of course, we can. Uh, there's the Olympics. You got Michael Phelps and his medals. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of great records here. That's why sports are fascinating. I mean, you can. There's all aspects of it, especially when you're talking about records. Uh, you know, 
that's stats and records are a way that these players get measured against each other. So it's just really fascinating to look at this stuff. It really is. But like I said, hockey is Wayne Gretzky, Marley Mew, Gordy Howe, and then I mentioned Bobby Orr. There's your stats. Yeah. <laughs> Goalies, Broder, Wah, yeah. Yeah. all those guys. But I wanted to get some like fun stats. But I think that is it. I think so too. Thanks for joining us. We very much appreciate all of you. Uh, Andrew, tell them where they can go on the old Facebook. Yeah, go to the Retroactive uh, Sports Podcast. Uh, do uh, this today in sports history. Every day, some appreciation posts, uh, you know, maybe once a week. So if there's a favorite player that you just want people to recognize, show appreciation to, send us a message. We can make an appreciation post for you. Uh, do sports quotes and did you knows as well. And then also some fun questions every once in a while. So please go check out the Retroactive a Sports Podcast. Facebook. Yeah, a- yeah, Andrew does an amazing job over there. Please go check it out. And also real quick. Uh, just a uh, just want to send not that it matters that it's coming from me, but condolences and love to uh, Jay Briscoe's family. He was a professional wrestler, uh, passed away in a car accident uh, way too soon, younger than us, Andrew. Uh, yeah, no, I saw that. That was and he and man, that guy was really talented. So, uh, there's a video going around on on Twitter of him with his daughter, and like he's like she's teaching him a, a cheering routine. Oh, and it's geez. really, and it's just heartbreaking because it's so, you can tell he loved his family. But a shout out uh, and much love and rest in peace. Yeah. All right. And until next time.